Hello everyone, my name is Roberto and in this video I'm going to explain to you calcium imbalance. I will mainly focus on the processes that the body will take in order to bring those calcium levels back into normal levels which are 9 through 11 milligrams per deciliter. Let's get into it. Now hypocalcemia means not enough calcium in the blood. So this means that the, that the calcium level is going to be less than 9 milligrams per deciliter. Uh, this is a bad thing because this can cause uh, so certain types of symptoms that I will explain later. So what the body is going to do is going to use the parathyroid gland which are embedded in the thyroid gland. These small dots over here, those are the parathyroid glands. And the parathyroid gland is going to release PTH which is parathyroid hormone. Uh, PTH is going to target two, two different types of, of organs. It will cause bone resorption and what that means is going to break the bone to take some of the calcium out of it to put it out in the blood. And the type of cell that is going to do this are called osteoclasts. They will have the job to take that calcium from the bone and let it out into the blood. The other type of organ that is going to be targeted are the, are the kidneys. So after the parathyroid hormone is in the target kidneys, the kidneys will stop losing that calcium in the urine. Something important to know is the kidneys will release calcidiol and then this calcidiol will be converted into calcitriol which is activated vitamin D and the calcitriol will target the intestines in order to absorb more calcium from the diet. So these are the three different type of organs that will be targeted by the PTH. Well, the intestines are targeted by calcitriol, but after the release of PTH. These three organs are going to be targeted to then bring those calcium levels back into the normal level of nine to 11 milligrams per deciliter. Now you could probably notice this hand over here that represents the type of the main symptom that patients with hypocalcemia would have they will have uh, muscle spasms okay now let's go to hypercalcemia now hypercalcemia means too much calcium in the blood that means the 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 blood will have more than mil, more than 11 milligrams per deciliter of calcium now instead of using the parathyroid glands to bring the calcium to normal levels. Now it's the thyroid that will release a hormone that will target some of the, the organs that we mentioned before. So the hormone that the thyroid will release is called calcitonin. Now calcitonin will target the bones and the kidneys as well. So in the bones, it will call building of the bone. So that will be taking the calcium from the blood and put that calcium inside of the bone. So I have something here to remember what calcitonin, calcitonin does to bone and try to remember boning. So calcitonin, boning, calcitonin, boning because calcitonin will take the calcium and put it inside of the bone, bone in. So remember that. My physiology instructor always uses this and I think that's a very good way to remember what, what calcitonin does to the bone. Now the other targeted organ by calcitonin are the kidneys. So the kidneys, is the job of the kidney is going to be similar to what it does with hypocalcemia, but, hy, but for hypercalcemia, it's going to get rid of the excess calcium from the blood through the urine. So basically just take the calcium from the blood, put it in the urine and, and then just spit it out. The main symptom of a person with hypercalcemia is going to be decreasing neuromuscular excitability. This will cause uh, constipation and stomach and acid ulcers. This is going to happen because of the decreased neuromuscular excit excitability. That normal movement of the intestines, which is called peristalsis, will not be happening and this will cause the constipation this would also have an effect on the stomach and this will cause the acid ulcers this is the way to identify if the patient has hypercalcemia but remember that the calcium level is going to be greater than 11 milligrams per deciliter 
after these two processes the calcium will go back into the normal level which again is 9 through 11 milligrams per deciliter i hope that was helpful and easy to understand if you have more questions or if you want to mention something else about the calcium imbalance please drop those comments or questions in the comment section below please subscribe to my channel don't forget to turn on the bell notification and i hope to see you in the next one